All right, Peter. Welcome everyone to uh, Solarizing Your Home or Business. Um, our webinar is gonna cover really the basics of uh, solar, uh, what it's about, what are the considerations uh, for putting it on your home or uh, business uh, structures or even uh, houses of worship? Um, what are the benefits? Why are we doing it? Uh, some of the ins and outs. So a um, little bit about ourselves. Noel Smith, uh, who is moderating questions, is actually the more experienced uh, solar person. Um, and has had solar on his house for more than 10 years um, and has uh, helped uh, some houses of worship uh, install solar. Um, I, my name is Peter Puglianisi. We're both on uh, the Haverford Township Environmental Advisory Committee, which is uh, sort of how we got involved in it. <clears throat> we joined a few years ago, the Southeast Pennsylvania Solarize, and then we spun off Solarize Delco. And so um, without further ado, let's go into the basics of solar. So uh, obviously uh, the solar collectors, solar cells are able to directly convert uh, energy from the sun to electricity. Um, and the process, uh, well, the, the electricity is then sort of conditioned and moderated by what's called um, inverter um, microinverters and other similar types of devices um, that then puts the energy into the home energy distribution system. Those of you who are interested in emergent using battery storage for emergency power might have a battery um, and Noel has a battery in his home system and, and can explain the ins and outs of that. Uh, from there, you are either using solar uh, power generated, consuming it in the house, illustrated by this light bulb, refrigerators, HVAC, et cetera, et cetera. Any excess is going into the grid during day daytime hours, for example, when the sun is shining. Um, and then the typical system is connected to the grid and uses net metering. And when the sun isn't shining, it's taking power from the grid and using it for home demand. Um, and so that's the basics. Um, the, this uh, slide illustrates net metering. So um, you obviously are generating power when the sun is shining, uh, how, how the economics are really facilitated by <clears throat> the legal framework of net metering, which basically says if we could condense it uh, to the simplest possible form is um, you're reconciling the energy put into the grid and the energy coming out of the grid on an annual basis. And if you're using more energy during that year uh, re uh, a reconciliation period, you're, you're paying the power company for the power consumed. Um, and if you're uh, generating more, they're paying you a little bit of something. Now, the beauty of net metering is that you are trading power for the retail rate. So you're really getting the maximum financial return uh, on that power uh, that you're generating and trading on the grid, daytime, nighttime, cloudy days, snowy days, et cetera. And so that's a, it's a, it's a great uh, financial mechanism for the homeowner. Uh, one of the reasons why we try to uh, build a roughly 100% of your annual consumption is you don't get paid as much for the excess power that you're putting into the grid if on, on that annual basis you're generating more than you're using. So the benefits, obviously it is a zero carbon emission energy source, zero carbon, zero other pollutants energy source. So it's beneficial for the environment, beneficial for climate change. Uh, one of the things uh, 
to remember is it's a really good return on an, an investment. So you're, uh, you're paying for the installation somehow, uh, but what you're getting is you're getting power over 30 plus years um, at, at a rate that you've already paid a fixed amount for. Um, and so um, that whole economic return benefits from the federal tax credit, a 30% tax credit. So basically 30% of the installed cost of solar you're taking as tax credits in subsequent years of tax returns. Very, uh, um, very simple system, no moving parts, no maintenance, um, maybe sometimes the oddball thing like, well, a squirrel has damaged something, right? Um, Low risk, uh, a lot of people say, well, should I, I'm thinking I might be moving in five or 10 years. Is it really, does it make sense for us to install solar? Uh, I have a friend who <laughs> installed solar on two of his houses in Pennsylvania and then moved to North Carolina. And one of the reasons besides that he's, he is uh, you know, very pro solar power is that he knew that he was going to get his money back because the statistics show that it's one of the few quote unquote home improvements that increase that you, you get basically everything back when you sell the house. Now, if you sell a house after 25 years and the output of the system is waning, you're not going to return your original investment in terms of, uh, in terms of the resale value of the house, but it's pretty much a, 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 a guaranteed return on investment. Um, I would say when you look at it as, you know, it, return on investment, it's, it's no risk. If you're gonna live in the house, you're reducing your power consumption and your bills. So you're getting that money. It's not like the stock market. The return is probably like the stock market. So it's a great investment, which I think is really not so well recognized. Um, and then uh, the, uh, the last item is resilience and battery. And we'll talk about that right back around as we get a little bit further into it. One of the things we tell people, well, some people ask, do, do, you, do we have to have a battery? Are we going to be cut off from the grid? The answer is no and no. Um, and we'll talk about why you might want a battery. Um, so first question is, are property suitable for, so for rooftop solar? Um, ideal is unshaded and a south facing roof, but east and west is often a configuration that you'll find and that works as well. Putting solar on the north face of a angled roof, as you can see from this photograph, th this is a, a photograph of uh, Google, Pro Google Project Sunroof, which if you Google it, you'll be able to enter your address and see this kind of image. And the bright yellow is very good annualized sun. And you'll notice that's what you're seeing on the south side uh, of all of these angled roofs. And the north side is a, a dull orange, right? And sometimes you'll even see a dark purple. And that's really almost nothing. So it's a very good visual indication and statistical uh, information regarding, well, if you input how much your, your, your bill is, your monthly bill is, it's going to tell you how big of a system you would need to uh, achieve a certain percentage and so forth. Anyway, the, the other really, really important thing for, uh, for you to think about, and when we try to help people with solar, that's top of the list, is how old is the roof, right? So five to 10 years, great. Not something you really have to think about. Brand new, even better, right? Uh, if you're in that 15, 20 plus years, definitely, you're going to pause and say, well, I don't know if it's really the right time. Uh, the next time we roof the house might be the right time. Okay. And um, so this Project Sunroof is a useful tool. It takes a little bit of time to master, uh, but it's, it, it gives you good information. Okay. 
Um, how long do solar panels last? Well, rule of thumb is 30 years. They uh, All of the panel specs are publicly available information. You have spec sheets. They will, uh, one of the things that they tell you is what is the guaranteed lowest rate of decline of performance. So solar panels lose a very small percentage of the power uh, over the course of the life of the panel. I would say 80% now from the data that I've seen is a conservatively low figure for what it's going to produce after 30 years. Um, the other thing that people ask oftentimes is, well, shouldn't I wait? Isn't there going to be a, a breakthrough on the efficiency of solar powers, power? Well, there's, I don't know that there's going to be a light bulb type breakthrough every single year. The output and the efficiency of solar panels has been going up at a steady clip for 30, 40 plus years. And, you know, for example, Noel, I think on his house many, many years ago had panels that are, uh, were rated at 250 watts, whereas today everyone is installing 400 plus watt panels. Uh, so they've gotten more efficient. That's driven the cost down. The cost has been, you know, cost benefits been uh, uh, by the efficiency has helped, but also the cost of the panels and the equipment has come down over those years as well. So um, we uh, solar all the installers have some type of warranties. Manufacturer of the equipment have some type kind of warranties. Um, are we actually? Um, engage a couple of different installers that we've negotiated pricing on, which we'll, we'll explain a little bit later. And they have a 25 year warranties on, I believe, equipment, maybe 10 years on labor, if I remember correctly. That's right. Um, and so it's, you know, pretty, uh, pretty safe in terms of getting what you need. Never, well, the vast majority of installations are relatively problem free. Sometimes there's bumps in the road. And so you want them, you want those warranties to uh, uh, use if anything happens. Um, maintenance. So people ask that question, isn't there maintenance? Well, if you're on a tilted roof, not really. Um, if you're, uh, if, uh, if you're on a flat roof and you lay the panels flat, they may need cleaning. So you can get maintenance contracts and some installers want to sell you these extras. I think, um, you know, everyone that we know that has solar has really not had to have a maintenance contract. So what does it cost? What does it save? Well, so obviously there's an outlay up front for the installation of the equipment, but then you're, you're, getting prepaid electricity or, or free electricity after that, um, after that installed cost. Um, certainly, uh, well, and how long does it take to get to payback, I guess is one way to look at it. And okay, years to payback is, is one way that a lot of people look at it. Or return on, if you're an investment person, return on investment. Um, but essentially, after that, period that you're paying you're getting you're paying it back by by getting you know reduced power bills then essentially it's free electricity right so you can look at it that way or you can look at it as investment and return um so what are what's the cost so this is just an example an average uh Power use, 10,000 kilowatt hours per year, suitable roof locations, therefore pretty good efficiency um, in terms of uh, solar radiation availability. Um, so in this example, we've got 6.37 kilowatt system. So the installed uh, capacity, if you will, expressed as kilowatts. And, and that for a typical regional uh, good sun, sun exposure is going to generate 7,600 kilowatt hours per year. 
So your typical upfront cost, and this is a, a range, uh, typical range that you'll find with contractors in the area. Um, we generally think in terms of dollars per watt, $2.75 to $3.20. Why? Because, you know, everyone's got a somewhat different size system. So what does it boil down to? Seventeen dollars to $20,000. Um, and then you have the tax incentives, right? So today you've got a 30% tax credit. Uh, so that reduces that installed cost. And then what, when you run out the reduction in electric bills, you, you have a sizable savings after 25 years and it's gonna continue to generate power. So uh, that's sort of an example of the economics. Um, I guess, what does that work out to, Noel, in terms of years payback? What is it, roughly 8, 10, 12 years? Yeah, something? typically uh, for a, a residential, the payback is in the uh, 8 to 9 eight to nine or 10-year range. And and when I say payback, that means the ge the energy generated has paid for the capital cost of the panels. And so it's basically free after that it's like um you know after it's paid off and then the commercial ones takes a little bit longer to pay off it's typically around 12 to 14 years and that's because the uh, commercial bills are constructed differently and you still have a, a cost um that is um, a burden cost on there for the demand charge so but they don't have the uh quite the advantage that a residential does in the net metering so okay so how do you pay for it? Uh, well, you, if you've if you've got some savings and you can use it as an investment, that's really the best return. If you like anything, if you take out a loan, you have loan origination costs and interest, and so that actually delays the return on investment, delays the payback, right? Uh, uh, but if you have to do it, it's still beneficial in, in the long run. And then the last option is lease. And so uh, there are different leasing companies. We actually have been working with one leasing company that really has the, we think is the best arrangement. Um, they actually give you energy audit and a little bit of energy weatherization service up front as part of the package, 20 year lease, flat payments. That's one of the things that you really want to look for rather than escalation. Uh, and they have some other good features, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, other sources, you know, so where you could take out a second mortgage if you want. Um, I think what you what you find is that the installers often have pretty decent deals um, in terms of financing uh, when you compare it to a second mortgage, for example. All right, so. Um, financing the system. This is just an example of the payback. So the green line is basically showing, hey, you're using it as an investment, you're paying for the installation, and then it crosses over at a certain number of years, and then everything else is gravy, right? So that's one way to look at it. If you are taking out a loan, you're sort of paying in those early years, and you know the shorter um, the, shorter the loan will yeah, the shorter the loan, the quicker you cross back over and, and get a net benefit. And then, you know, for look at it this way, you know, using someone else's money versus an investment, you're obviously going to get much better return uh, if it's your own money. Similarly, a lease. So you could look at it, a lease a number of different ways, but the 20 year lease that uh, the firm that we work with has. Um, it's a 20 year commitment, but during those 10, 20 years, you're paying less than you would have paid Pico. And the other thing is, as we know, well, the price is very volatile, but the price of electricity has gone up. Uh, and so the, that's actually improved the payback. So when we, uh, when we get someone who's interested, we do an assessment and then we kind of decide, is it right for you? You decide if it's right for you, I should say. But we look at things like the the your bills and uh, the solar arrangement and tree cover, uh, age of the roof, et cetera, et cetera. If everyone thinks, hey, this is what we want to do, uh, normally you would get quotes 
Um, and then you would think about how are you going to pay for it or finance it. And then you would get a, uh, an agreement to sign and the installer would install. Um, and so this is sort of what the installation process looks like. Um, and, uh, you know, rat, uh, mounting racks go on the roof. Roof penetrations, by the way, which also it's, it's got to be done right. Uh, but these are warranted, uh, warranted hardware that's used for the installations as well. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the installers will want to inspect the conditions because they, they won't want to install on a potentially defective roof, right? That's a red flag for them. So um, this and the screens that you're seeing on the bottom are... Um, a lot of the microinverter systems are giving very, very detailed information about the performance of individual panels and what you're generating and so forth. And so if you're a data, a data nerd, you, you'll love to look at the um, love to look at those kinds of outputs. I, I think I've heard from people that uh, oh, one fellow uh, who's on EAC, Hank, he said for the first year, he was like scrutinizing it all the time and marveling at how it was doing. And after that first year, he hasn't paid any attention to it whatsoever. So, okay, so what is Solarized Delco and why are we here? So we're, we're a 501c nonprofit. Um, and what our objective is, is to educate, to give you a, a simpler option to uh, installation. Uh, we have volunteers from our community. Various organizations have helped us. Um, and we have people that have had experience with installation or uh, uh, one of the initial fellows was actually uh, came out of the solar industry. Um, and so what we're trying to do is sort of remove the mystery. And the other big factor is it's a construction project with a contractor which has its risks as anybody who's done construction work on your house knows. And so we remove some of the mystery. We vet the installers that we work with. And so we remove a little bit of the risk and the fear. Okay. So we assess, uh, we help you assess uh, what's the potential for your home, versus your current usage, how much can you generate? Um, and then if you agree you want to proceed, we would connect you with one of the vet our vetted installers, okay? And so we have already done that process of evaluating and selecting based on reputation and warranties and pricing. And so one of the things we've done is we've negotiated sort of a, a better price than average retail for these guys. Um, and so the, the installer then will evaluate specifics, makes a formal proposal. Um, they will um, inspect the, the roof, structural aspects of the roof. Um, and then if everything's good and, and you proceed, they get the grid interconnection, file the permits, do the installation, get the inspection of the system afterward and then it gets turned on and voila you are generating electricity so federal tax credit 30 percent that's going to last for another eight years so that's one of the big facilitators of getting solar installed on your house um, we have negotiated some little deals with the installers, early, uh, early sign-on bonuses in any year. So first 10 customers get a little bit of a discount. We hold little uh, raffles periodically. Um, we uh, also, one of the things, if you haven't already done this, PICO offers uh, a very low cost energy audit. And so we have a code that you can get a discount off of an energy audit. Sometimes they hold events and they'll actually offer it for free. It's normally very inexpensive, I think 25 to $49 normally. 
uh, and uh, sometimes they'll offer these kind of discounts or sometimes even free. So uh, what do you do if you feel like you really want to do something, but you can't afford it? Well, one way obviously is to take a loan. If you prefer a lease, which really gives you the least financial benefit, but it requires no upfront, uh, you're looking at a 20 year lease, no money down. Um, and the firm that we work with is basically assessing how good is it for your, for your property and they won't recommend it unless they think that they can beat the, that your reduction in your power bill is basically on average going to be better than the lease price, the monthly lease price. And they also, you know, they're not really fussy about income. The key thing that they're fussy about is that you're a reliable utility bill payer that can do auto pay. Right. So we're all familiar with putting our, our Pico bills on auto pay. Uh, and that's basically what they want. So, um, uh, as I said, they roll in audit and weatherization. And um, they also have pretty good standard terms like what if I move? Uh, and, and they will either try to get the next uh, homeowner to keep the system or they will take the system off if necessary. What if you are on a relatively limited income or social security fixed income? Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do as part of our nonprofit mission is to make this accessible to as many people as possible. And so uh, to reduce the cost, we are offering um, grants uh, to income qualified uh, homeowners that want to install. And so we've partnered with Community Action Agency of Delaware County that's going to do the screening. <clears throat> and you could see the income thresholds. Um, and I think if you're an SSI or a TAMP uh, recipient, you're automatically qualified as well. Uh, otherwise, this organization, which is another nonprofit, will take an application and have to do financial verification, which is one of the reasons why we teamed with them because they have done this for decades as part of their mission uh, to, to deliver a host of services, including if you've never heard of them and you're in those income categories, free energy audits and free weatherization for your home. Okay, something else to think about. So uh, what is the future of solar and how much can we really affect uh, the future of our climate? Well, so one of the views on um, a Google Project Sunroof is you could back out to the entire zip code and it, it, it will give you statistics as to how many buildings in this zip code are solar viable. Um, the data, you know, warning, the data is uh, sort of automatically processed satellite interpretation. Uh, the ex number of existing installations is probably, well, last updated 2018 for this one. So, uh, but what you could see is a good percentage of the structures in this zip code are uh, pretty good, well configured for solar. So why else should you do it? Well, concern about climate change. It's one of one of the best things you can do is directly increase solar capacity. We are um, in a state that is not blessed by environmentally active elected officials, uh, and so our goal. Um, we have statewide goals that were set probably 20 years ago that called for 20 years ago, called for the utilities uh, getting one half of 1% of power from solar. <laughs> and we've been stuck at that level for a decade now, right? So, um, 
this is one of the best ways that you can really have an impact in terms of reducing greenhouse gases and the effects of climate change. So we talked about why is it a good time, tax credits, return on investment, increase the resale value of your home, um, and reliability in terms of not having escalating utility costs, right? Okay, so why else? Well, we talk about houses of worship. So um, uh, Noel is actually uh, belongs to uh, a local uh, church and they installed a 44 rather large 44 kilowatt system um, and uh, so but now there's actually better mechanisms easier mechanisms for nonprofit entities like houses of worship to implement solar and you know so it used to be extremely complicated for them and municipalities for that matter, because they weren't paying income tax and they couldn't get the tax credit. So now there's a mechanism to get that 30%, even for a house of worship. Okay. Um, so there's also for commercial, there's a commercial rate incentive. It's a little more complicated for uh, properties that pay commercial rates. So that's a whole nother discussion for an, another day. For a business, being a green business also attracts business, right? So it's good public relations. So it's good, it's good, it's good. Uh, really quickly, should we get a battery? Do we have to get a battery? The answer is no. Um, why would you get a battery? Uh, the battery added cost is pretty significant, right? We're saying 13 to 15,000, not necessarily for a, a large house, certainly not a full house backup, but um, like what Noel has done, he has uh, wired certain essential things like refrigerators uh, to the his battery, right? And so if there's a power outage, it's everything turns off except the essential circuit and he can run for hours, I don't know, days. <laughs> well, yeah, my, um, my, I have one battery, uh, which, which provides enough energy to run my house for about a day, but the sun shines every day to recharge it. And so um, it really has to cover me for, you know, 12, 14 hours when the sun's down and then the sun comes up again and it, and it recharges the battery and the sun runs the house during the day. And I think you really, you know, you want to consider like if, if, if I were to get a generator and I, you know, if you, if you needed a generator, then you would say, oh, solar is a good option for me or a battery is a good option if, if you have solar, you know, so you compare it like uh, for, for resiliency, like you would a generator. So, I know, there, was a, there was a question. Uh, is there any other questions on the battery? We had a couple of questions in the chat, Peter. See if anyone has any other any other questions. Okay. okay. Now there is there's actually new inverter technology that it is complicated and and, and involves that whole that same circuitry question of putting certain things on the, the essential for backup power. But these new inverters actually have the capability of if the sun is shining and you don't have a battery, it will deliver power to certain things. But really, if you want reliable backup power, you should do a battery. Um, the, the other thing is time of use pricing. And this is a complicated arrangement, but um, to, to, uh, well, to explain it, electricity, uh, is plentiful at night because things like wind gener wind turbines continue to run, nuclear power plants don't are not easily dialed up and down. Um, and so Pico got authority to deliver sort of an optional time of use pricing structure, steep discounts at night, higher rates during the day, right? And so um, the interesting thing for someone who has solar on their home is they could get paid a higher price 
uh, for power that they, they deliver into the grid during the day. I don't want to go into it. It's very complicated, but uh, it is an option that if anyone is interested in, we could certainly talk you through down the road. Um, beyond solar, okay, so we've all heard about incentives for a lot of things. So geothermal, 30% incentives. The, the, the tax credit for, um, for solar is different than non-solar things. So solar is guaranteed 30% tax credit. A lot of these other things are income qualified. Uh, so if you have, you know, for example, um, whether it's an electric car or, or energy efficiency, if you have over a certain, I think it's $300,000 for uh, married fi filing jointly, uh, what they call TDI or uh, basically the total income before deductions. Uh, and so people in mo moderate and low income categories really can get the benefit of helping to pay for things like heat pumps and um, energy upgrades, even electrical system upgrades necessary for some of these things. And I recently actually I just filed my tax return and we had energy efficient windows put in. And so we got a $600 tax credit for that. Um, heat pumps, another subject for another webinar. If you're interested in them, look for our other upcoming webinars on heat pumps or videos online. Now, if you cannot do rooftop solar, I would certainly encourage you to continue to try to do things other ways like buy renewable power. Complicated in today's regulatory environment, but it is possible to buy renewable for under PICO's price. It's just annoying <laughs> uh, because contracts have a you know one-year contract, two-year contract, um, and you're always having to sort of reshop. Um, electric vehicles, certainly encourage you to look at some of the other videos for that. Go to our uh, Haverford EAC YouTube, and we have videos on all of these topics. We have a great uh, website, uh, Haverford Climate Action. Dot org. Um, and if you, um, you want to do any of these things, you know, certainly reach out and we can help you do that. So if you're interested in pursuing solar and you want to go it alone, that's great. Hopefully what, what you've heard tonight helps you do that. If you want to do it with Solarized Delco, uh, really, all we need is an email or go online, solarizedelco.org, and schedule um, a meeting to talk about these things. We, you, we would need your power bill, obviously, you know, the address, you would need to own the property. And that's, you know, email, phone number, that's all we need to get started. Um, and we'd be happy to go through, you know, what your situation is, what might be right for you. So hopefully that addresses most, most of yours. This is just um, one of, our, uh, one of the, our volunteers who also got solar through Solarized Delco. Just a few slides on, on her home. Again, the PICO bill is an important part of the assessment. And this is an example of before and after um, the solar installation. So questions, let's open it up. And if you don't have any that burning questions, we have some other topics that we can talk about. So well, Peter, there's one. Uh, could you talk about um, the weight, the additional weight and, and the structural impacts to a roof and how that's handled? So the, it's really not a lot of weight. The structural uh, is, is important and uh, the assessment has to be done. Um, any home that was built with uh, to code within the last 30 or 40 years, uh, 
is adequate structurally, as long as there's no defects. Um, older homes actually require eyeballing what is uh, what are the rafters and the supports and the spans. Um, and I would say in maybe a couple of percent of the cases, we actually, I don't know how many, I guess maybe higher than a couple of percent. I have heard of one case, maybe two cases where um, the homeowner was faced with some structural reinforcement in the attic and uh, didn't want you know, to pay the additional cost for that. And so our arrangement with our installers is basically they don't, you know, there's no obligation. And if they, um, if after the assessment, uh, it comes back and says, well, you need to do this and the cost, the additional cost is going to be this, you're free to walk away at that point. But in terms of, you know, is it a significant weight? No. Uh, the question is uh, a little bit of weight and also wind load. And, you know, so the installers really don't want the liability of installing on a roof that isn't up to today's structural standards. Yeah, great. Can you talk a little bit about um, electric vehicles when, how, how would you plan for that? If you, uh, if you have an electric vehicle today, I guess it'll be in your base load already, you'll know what it is, but yeah, how do, what if you're planning to get an electric car, what are the considerations? That's a really, really good question. So we could help you estimate the additional power demand for an electric vehicle based on miles you expect to miles that you expect to drive annually. Uh, but conceptually, it's like, yeah, I, I will need a little extra, right? Now there are other things, similar things. Like I recently replaced a natural gas heater with a cold weather rated heat pump for the whole house. Did that increase my electric consumption? You betcha. Did it increase my annual energy bill? Nope. <laughs> but yes, it consumes a lot more electricity than when I use natural gas. So all of those things are factors. And so you wanna think about those things, absolutely. Other questions for anyone? So I will say if you, you know, if you want to shop elsewhere and we have had people that have come to us and shopped elsewhere and look, that's okay with us. We, we, we have set us set our operations up with these agreements following sort of the, this DOE created concept of solarize to make it easier so that you can uh you know so if you come through us and you say i want to proceed we're only going to go to one of our installers and say okay this is the situation give us a quote because we've negotiated pricing uh and we know that they're reputable right and so that is a way for you to be confident that you're getting a decent price and you're getting a good firm and you don't have to shop around. Some people are insatiable shoppers. And we have one guy who both came to us and I think he got six other quotes, <laughs> which I kind of view as masochistic having dealt with contractors over the years. <clears throat> but um the difficulty is, you know, with like with any contractor, you get a lot of apples and oranges opinions also. And that's the other thing is we, you know, we have enough experience that, you know, we, we, we know the basics ins and outs and, uh, you know, can tell you what the situation is for you. What's, what is, what is it going to be like? Uh, I mean, there are some things that, uh, are tricky, tricky, tricky situations, but we've actually negotiated pricing for some of these things like, oh, I wanna put it on the garage. Well, there's an added cost for running conduit from the main breaker to the garage, right? 
well, so we have a, we have some established cost for that. Oh, I have a steep, steep roof, or I have a slate roof. Slate is difficult, very, very difficult. So we we know all these things, and we're able to you know kind of tell you what you can expect, right? So we want everyone who feels like they can do solar when they can do solar to do solar. Uh, why? Because uh, not enough is happening for our children and grandchildren to have the, the future like the life that we had. And we'd like to see everyone take as much action as they could take to get things done because it's not happening fast enough um, based on, you know, let the government do it not happening, right? Peter, so, there's a question. Um, uh, we have a question about um, this project sunroof has my roof uh, in the wrong orientation. Are there any installs that are not flat on the roof? And I'm interpreting this as it's a slanted roof, but you want the panels to point uh, slightly in a different azimuth. So um, if you ever... Yeah. Do you ever do you ever install them where they're not flat to the roof? Um, yeah. I'm not aware of any. So you're saying uh, you want to go on a east west roof and put some tilt so that they're facing right. south. Yeah. So the standard hardware isn't really for that, and it's actually, you know, the standard hardware on an on a, a tilted roof is actually the cheapest way to install. It, which is maybe counterintuitive, but there's it actually costs a little bit more to put them on a flat roof because you're using um, you're you're using uh, hardware to stand them up on the flat roof and put a little bit of angle to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Knowles Church actually had both of those cases, right? So they had a flat roof section and and um, and that it had an angled roof section, but counterintuitively, the angled roof is actually the cheapest install. And no, you wouldn't really, I, I don't want to say categorically, you may have to, you know, do it yourself. We actually know a guy in town who asked us for help and he wanted to install solar on his own house. And we were like, well, <laughs> Uh, we, we don't we're not that good and he actually did it and he you know he did all the research and got the permits and he did the install and it was like well more power to him so um I, which is it's cheaper but you have to be a, a little bit you know gung-ho and a little bit crazy to do it i think um it's cheaper because you know the the equipment cost it's a construction project and the equipment cost is, I would say not even half of the cost of the project. You know, we have a question about the panels themselves. Do the contractors that we, um, that we recommend use the best solar panels for maximizing output? So the, there's, uh, so they all offer sort of a base and an optional bump up at a little bit higher cost. So, the in terms of the low cost option, if you have the roof space, it uh, to to use the base panel and generate a hundred percent of your demand, that's actually the more cost effective option uh, because you're paying a premium for a higher efficiency unit. So these companies are develop are doing product development continuously, and they're squeezing out a little bit more efficiency out of the panels. And so their latest model that they just spent a lot of money developing, they're gonna, they're gonna get a, a premium price. But the way, the way the products have been developed, it's like, well, next year that might be the base or the year after that, that might be the base. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about you know paying extra for an extra half a percent of efficiency. So the, the panel efficiencies today are running over 20%, 21. I, it's been a while since I looked at the specs, but it's very common now to get 21% efficiency panels. 
And, you know, the difference between that and a, 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 a more efficient panel is only going to be on the order of maybe a half percent, a percent, maybe more if you're buying a really low end pa panel, there's actually every once in a while people have asked us, oh, you've got a warehouse full of, you know, 10 year old panels that are, you know, have maybe a third less output than today's panels, you know, do you want them? And the answer is, well, no, we're not in the install business and we absolutely have nothing to do with it uh, that we could do with it. So, um, but is it worth, you know, so how should I put this? People have done it. <clears throat> they have put in the more efficient panels if they couldn't get to 100% and they wanted to get as close as possible. So that's really the answer I would suggest for you. Great, yeah, the next question is about the uh, the battery systems. And the question is about, uh, are the batteries like car batteries? And if it's okay, Peter, I'll jump in on this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, so um, I guess effectively, yeah, uh, they are the, uh, the, the, the same type of battery that are used in electric or EVs. Uh, on electric cars. Um, I have a Tesla Powerwall, which is the same battery technology that are used in the cars with different software put on top of it. Um, it stands, it's freestanding, you know, uh, in my basement, um, it's, it's fairly um, sleek and thin and is attached to the wall so it doesn't fall over. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of how the batteries uh, work. But yeah, they're modern, it's modern battery technology. Uh, it's the lithium ion batteries. Um, there's, I think three or four, different manufacturers out there now that provide, um, you know, commercial and, and residential scale um, battery packs that go with solar systems. And they all come with the really um, modern software that you can monitor and configure on your phone for different um, configurations. And then, yep. So that's, that's a little bit about the, uh, the batteries, but yeah. Uh, the next question is, um, what is the minimum roof area needed to make solar installation profitable? Well, the answer is it depends on a lot of things. But one of the things that's baked into our negotiated pricing is there are certain fixed costs associated with any home solar installation, permits, design, mobilization. So it's uh, the, the cost per unit output for a small installation is a little bit higher than for a larger installation, right? So, but the answer is, it really depends on you. Um, that we have had people who our assessment was, well, yeah, you could put solar in, but you've got a, <clears throat> you've got a little bit of a partial shading situation. The the um, efficiency is not going to be as great for the um, number of panels that you put on. So the return on investment is going to be a little bit longer. And they say, I don't care. I want solar. <laughs> So, it, which we understand and we applaud the thinking on that. I mean, assuming, <clears throat> obviously, if you had a home that had, you know, a 200 year oak tree that is hanging over the top of your roof every summer and getting, letting no sun through, it's not, we consider that infeasible. But in that situation, you know, the question of size return, it's really, it's up to you and why are you doing it? Um, so the, the, the smaller systems take a little bit longer to pay back. That's about the best I can do. Okay, I think you've hit all the questions that are in the uh, chat, Peter. I don't know if anyone else has any other questions. Um, feel free to take yourself off mute or pop it in the, uh, the chat. We'll hang on here for another couple of minutes if folks want to ask any other questions. Yeah, and uh, thank you for participating. If you could tell us, you know, where in the chat, maybe uh, where you live, you know, town, which town you live in, how you heard about this. And, you know, certainly uh, just so we're trying to see, you know, how effective are we in reaching people outside of Haverford Township, where we started this 
but we're really trying to serve all of Delaware County. If anybody knows um, any uh, community groups in other areas that might be interested in hosting this type of a workshop, uh, certainly let us know of that. Um, anyone with any organizations that might um, you know, have connections in uh, moderate lower income communities in Delaware County, let us know. We, we are, you know, I, I said before that we're, we offer gr grants. We've been offering grants for more than a year and we haven't found someone who wants to take it. So we'd love to give, give some money away. All right, uh, if there's no more questions, I just wanna leave it with, uh, hey, thanks for your interest. Thanks for wanting to do something about uh, the environment and climate change. And if you think this might be for you, even if you're not sure, reach out to us, either send us an email or go to our website and uh, sign up for a little assessment session. And we'll be happy to uh, do our best to uh, help you understand where you're at with your home. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Have a great night.